So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our ICB Business Excellence Skillnet webinar on the four disciplines of execution with Ray McCraw from Franklin Covey. By way of introduction to Ray, Ray is a seasoned executive with a proven track record for achieving exceptional results with people and organizations in the UK, the US, Central Europe, and in the Middle East. Ray began his career in the avionics industry and spent 11 years excelling in the field of software and system engineering with Smith Aerospace, now GE Aviation. Having become one of the youngest business development executives in Smith's history and developing a real taste for leadership and people development in the process, he left the avionics industry to take senior roles in the high-tech arena, holding both European and international positions in select software tools, Princeton SoftTech, Alternative Business Solutions, and the Message Labs Group. From 2007 through to early 2014, Ray held a position on the Board of Directors for Nextera One, a 1.1 billion managed services organization and was responsible for services, operations, and HR. This board level accountability for both customer and employee experience proved to be a critical grounding for Ray as a business execution specialist. In parallel, Ray has also built his own management consultancy business. Through this vehicle, he engages with the UK and international organizations, delivering coaching and development, particularly in execution, leadership, and communication skills. Ray has built a portfolio of clients since 2004, where structured mentoring for leaders in both the public and the private sector has delivered exceptional results. The Franklin Covey execution journey began in 2006 for Ray, where as an executive in the Message Labs group, he participated in one of the first strategy execution programs outside of the US. It is very evident that his appetite for the application of the discipline to real situations in both simple and, co and complex businesses has never waned since those early days. In 2014, Ray was appointed as the UK Strategy Execution Practice Leader at Franklin Covey and has architected impact by leading a series of successful execution programs across a broad and deep range of clients since 2014. Let's now turn to our topic for today, as we know, there is nothing quite as powerful as people possessing a common purpose, and in turn, that purpose becomes something that takes the leap from an idea or an aspiration to the achievement of a measured outcome. This is, in essence, our session today. The what and the how of defining a clear target, moving our collective performance curves, and objectively measuring our success and progress in that endeavor. Our ground rules for today, Ray will present for about 40 minutes before opening up the discussion for exploration. For now, everybody is muted and we encourage you to use the chat function to submit questions or comments. Where we encounter problems with broadband, please bear with us in case we need to pause the camera. And today's session is being recorded and without further delay, I'll pass you over to Ray and we will get started. Loda, thanks and it's great to be here today. Um, if you can use the chat, that would be hugely appreciated. We're going to talk about achieving results, hence the no really. We really are going to be talking about achieving breakthrough results today. Um, before I go any further, you may be wondering, um, Franklin Covey, what's the story there? What's the background? Um, we're, uh, this isn't our first rodeo. We've, um, we're a well-established, publicly quoted business with over 30 years experience in this game. And, you may have encountered somewhere on your travels, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the, the seminal book, arguably, for personal and team effectiveness. Um, it's the second biggest selling business book of all time. So if you have heard of it, it's, it's not surprising. Um, but all that we do around behavioral change is, is in pursuit of achieving breakthrough results. And the portfolio, which we're going to cover today around the four disciplines of execution is really at the heart of that. You're going to be treated to a seven habits experience on April 14 with my colleague Peter. But for today, let's go on 4DX. We may as well start with some breakthrough results. I don't expect you to read through all of this, but we should start with evidence. If um, you ever get the chance to read Factfulness by Hans Roslin, 
um, uh, this uh, to work based on data, on fact, on evidence, always a good place to start. So that's why I quite like to start places like this. So let's step in. And like I say, please do step on the chat if you've got observations, comments, questions, please just go on there and let us know what you, what's on your mind. Achieving breakthrough results. We're gonna take three steps today. We're gonna to take about 35 minutes from this point. There's gonna be three definitive steps. We're gonna look at the definition, the movement and the measurement that is associated with achieving, truly achieving breakthrough results. Before we go there though, let's get the, just a little bit of strategic context in place. And I wonder whether you could perhaps consider your own business right now. So 61 of you on this course, 62 now, Consider your business right now. Why do you exist? What's your unique value proposition? That's, that's where things begin. This is essentially an articulation of your ambition. With that, with uh, many of the best organizations, there's a clear articulation of what it would look like when you actually achieve that ambition. Now, I, I'm not going to ask you to um, regale that now or, or go on the chat, but I, I want you to just to reflect on that because these are the essentially the two layers before we we um, specify our plan our strategic intent and i trust that pretty much everyone on this call has a strategic plan of some description in your organization we assert that um, the plan manifests itself in in three different places um, the first place, not, not always quite so obvious, but it's a useful reminder, is in what we refer to as stroke of the pen. Perhaps you um, are approving a resource, uh, maybe investing in some capex or some opex. You, you've got to sign something off. So if, if you've got the responsibility or the authority, you're in a position to say approved. So that's one place where strategy can live. The most common place that it lives and the very reason why it's difficult to get on sessions like this today, right? So um, you, you've, you've taken time out of the day-to-day -day whirlwind and, and it would have been nice, wouldn't it, in the last year or so if things would have slowed down a bit. You th you'd have thought hitting level five and being at home, people would have been kinder, but I don't know about you, but I felt more intense really over the last year. It's felt busier. A lot more activity, and that, and that's what fills our day. It's the, it's this, it's the life support, if you will. It's what keeps the doors open and pays the wages. So, when we consider our ambition, our mission, the plan that sits beneath that, some of what we do is stroke of the pen. Other activities we're engaged in is that day-to-day -day whirlwind. What we're talking about today is the achievement of breakthrough results. It's not something you can just throw money at the problem on the left-hand side. This isn't something that we can just put in the machine, as it were, of just processing each day. We're looking for breakthrough results. There's a sobering reality in, in all of this. Think about a time where you were, um, you, you're on a team, or you're part of a business and there's perhaps two or three goals in addition to your fairly ferocious day-to-day -day whirlwind. I trust you will agree and our work with the Gallup organization over the last 12 years has borne this out, that there's a really good chance you deliver those two or three with excellence. So fingers at the ready on the chat because I just, I'm just looking for a number from you here. Um, in the work that we've done over the last 12 years and we've interviewed those organizations and teams that have taken on somewhere between four and ten goals in addition to the whirlwind. You just go on the chat now and just give, give me an indication of what you think the results have proved of how many of those goals generally get achieved with excellence. So like I say, just go on the chat. Don't, don't overthink it. Yeah, four, two or three. Um, one, Jill. Thanks, Seamus. Three. Um, Fiona, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, definitely. Um, thank you. So, yeah, maybe half of them, Larry. Okay, so with the work that we've done, you know what? You, you'd be lucky if you got one or two. The, the secret's in the wording. Goals achieved with excellence. Not goals that we've coped with, but with excellence. 
in 2005, you, you may have picked up from my introduction um, from Clodo that um, I, I, I joined a business. And when I first joined that business, I said, hey, let's rearrange our strategy. And I introduced 14 goals in addition to our whirlwind. So that was a very glowing introduction for me, wasn't it? That was something that, you know, arguably I, I should feel, and I am very proud of it, but didn't give all the detail. How many of those 14 goals do you think were delivered with excellence? Please feel free to go on the chat and um, don't hold back. Georgia, you're absolutely on the money there. Thank you, Laurent, thank you. Yeah, so with all of my interest, all of my expertise, all of my coaching skill, um, I, I'm a legend in my own bathroom. It was zero. It, it was, um, we, we, we weren't delivering with excellence. I, I had effectively um, given the organization indigestion. I had overgold the organization. So I'm delighted with the introduction and I'm very proud of my background. But when you get into the detail, you realize all of those really difficult places, some of the horrendous mistakes that were made. And I can't even begin to describe to you what a moment of profound naivety on my part back in 2004, 2005, to think that we could produce, we could, we could present the business with 14 goals and they would be delivered with excellence. So that's the sobering reality. It's this law of diminishing return. So I want you just to hold that thought from mission, ambition, through to our plan, through to breakthrough results. But like I say, this truly sobering reality. So definition of breakthrough result, this is where it's begin and begins. And, and George has just made a comment there about the, you know, it's how, how do you convince the senior leadership team of that. Well, well, let's let's start here. Let's consider what is it like when you do narrow down. Let's just consider what our whirlwind truly looks like. Now, on the left-hand side, I'm going to start putting dials on the left-hand side. These are your key performance indicators. Now, on the left-hand side, could you just come on the chat now and just type in some of your key performance indicators? Feel free to please be succinct. It might be revenue, orders, cash profit, EBITDA, um, customer experience, cl um, uh, client experience, um, employee uh, engagement, um, on time in full, um, really what, what, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, just please go onto the chat, share your KPIs, just keep them coming, um, be, be succinct, um, just keep them flowing. And, and it really is representative, isn't it, of this left-hand side, this ferocious whirlwind that we have to deal with. So interestingly, you know, you're coming on this session today, achieving breakthrough results. It all sounds very grand, doesn't it? But we got a lot to contend with here. That, that's a lot of KPIs. That's a lot of goals that we're looking to achieve. So along comes this question, this question of, so, okay, where should we apply really special focus? Someone senior in your organization, possibly the CEO, who knows, turns around and says, hey, I know where we should apply really special focus on all of it, all 14. That was me back in 2005. That's maybe you right now. That's so many of us where we just think it's a great idea to load up the business. It's almost, um, it's almost like a, a, a badge of honor to really take on this volume and this, this complexity. We see an alternative to this. Over the last 17 years, with 3,000 implementations, we present an alternative, have presented an alternative, and seen success where one of the goals associated with the whirlwind is pulled across and given different treatment. We, we refer to that as a wildly important goal. Now, we absolutely sustain the left-hand side. We, we, we maybe use balanced scorecards. Um, we, we use what it takes to truly keep the doors open, pay the wages, and do um, a smart, competitive job on the left-hand side. But world-class breakthrough? No, not on 14 of them, on one of them. 
we look for significant impact on that right hand side. And what we've seen over the last 17 years is, is just an absolute joy as we've watched as time has progressed, as behavior has been influenced, that goal can then go back into the whirlwind and something else comes across. But it starts with a definition and I want you to perhaps maybe think of your goals that you've just shared with me. Maybe it's OTIF or attention or employee or WIP um, and so on. How do you define the goal? Because in the four disciplines of execution, in the first discipline, we define it like this. X to Y by when. So when we define our goal that we're looking for breakthrough result, it has a start line, a finish line, and a deadline. So how would you approach that then? Well, what, what, what would you do about the definition of your Goal. I wonder whether you could just maybe have a quick go on the chat now and clearly th th there's a lot of thinking I'm, I'm going very fast but perhaps just pick a goal it might be it might be revenue it might be OTIF it might be employee experience but rather than it just being the the KPI itself what would you where is it now where do you want it to be in 12 months and just take it from there so your start line your finish line and your deadline. You want to take it from an existing point to a breakthrough point, something that you can be really excited about that the business will celebrate by a particular date. And, and I'd like to suggest that your date is 12 months from now, not, not 24 or 36 months that's too far out for the very people that you're looking to engage in your organization and equally not three months that's a sprint that's so immediate that's overwhelming around about 12 months works well so productivity get it four percent year on year to six percent year on year by december 22 love it but now we're getting specific um uh, increase employee engagement from start line to a finish line by the end of the fiscal year. So we could step in, couldn't we, and and be and get really specific about where we're starting and where we're heading. Um, DPO and span being researched here. So DPO five percent, uh, get it to five percent by the end of twenty one. So so now now we're getting specific. Thank you. So it's this first stage in delivering breakthrough results is getting really clear on exactly where you're headed. So, hey, I'm not sure I'm gonna win a Nobel Prize for that one, but we, it's, it's where we start. So then we go to move. What moves it? Let's really step into the disciplines now. And what is it that we're moving anyway? You know what, we're, we're effectively moving the performance curve. So gr there's great performance in your organization, right? So there's absolutely incredible performers in your organization, but the reality is that there's variability. Is that fair? So if you consider, think about your organization now, you may be zooming in and you've just got five people in your organization. You may have 5,000, doesn't matter what the number is, you'll have variability in your performance. And there's something so engaging and so attractive, isn't there, about shifting that performance curve righter and tighter. That's where great organizations are. Could you just go on this, the chat for me and um, refer to uh, an organization that you believe is great? It's just, it's just consistently great that the way in which it performs, the way in which it delivers. You might be thinking about its product, about its financial performance. Um, you could be thinking about its longevity. Um, please just just get yourself on the on the chat area. Who, who's in the green here? Who, who's who's a consistently great organization? Um, looking good. So there's some you know some classic names there. Some of them with an enormous um, market cap. Um, a nice nice Tesla message there, Colin. Isn't that interesting? You, kind of an organization that doesn't make any money and yet is considered and quite rightly too a great organization. Um, classic. Um, uh, uh, Google, Apple, et cetera, and others. Good to see, see Toyota in there. Toyota, one of those really interesting organizations that tries to go for um, operational excellence and product leadership at the same time. You know, tough, tough thing to achieve. Um, Schneider, love it. Um, 
a stripe I don't know I I have a feeling in this moment that I should I know that name Peter you can perhaps help me out and um, uh, remind me who who they are but either way this is the goal so when we're thinking about defi uh, defining and then moving our target we're moving our performance curve because there's such variability in performance 17 years in 3,000 implementations we use the four disciplines of execution let me take you through a worked example and I'm going to use, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to use hospitality. A hospitality because everyone stayed in a hotel. Hospitality because it's not going to offend anyone. I'm not going to step into some manufacturing example now, for example, and um, uh, participants today are going to think, oh, I don't think you've quite got that right. Um, relax, take a breath. We're now talking about moving that performance curve. So we've defined where we're heading. Now we're talking about moving that performance curve. So Let's just soak this up somewhat. So it begins with that first discipline of focusing on the wildly important. And in this particular instance, this is taken from a, a hotel operation called the Opryland, um, some of the biggest uh, hotels and convention centers outside of Las Vegas. And they were looking for maximum score on guest satisfaction. They were already at 42%. Now, believe me, that's strong. So that means 42% of respondents gave a maximum score. They wanted to take it to 55. So I mentioned earlier, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to win some big prize by saying, yeah, you've got to really narrow your focus. Well, no, we're really going to narrow our focus. So in the Opryland, in improving guest satisfaction, there are probably 127 different factors that make a contribution to a great guest experience. They drilled into three. They chose the fewest number of battles required to achieve this goal. I wonder if you can do something for me at this point, whether any of you have got a separate piece of paper by you, maybe you've got electronic. I wonder if you could just quickly do this for me. So on the left-hand side of your paper, just at the top, just say, ah, yes. And on the right-hand side of your paper, put yes, but. Because I think what I've just shared with you is maybe one or two ah, yes moments. The ah, yes moment, first one being um, taking a goal from the whirlwind and giving it different treatment and giving it a notation of start line, finish line, deadline. So you, you may have enjoyed the specificity of that. Your yes but though was why? How do you, how do you choose that one? How do you keep to it? So can you see where I'm going here? There, there's this log now that you can build as we go through. Um, so we've just got another 20 minutes to go. So just as we go through this, you've got this log of your ah yeses and your yes buts, and that will really inform the questions that you ask, the comments that you raise. And maybe this is the next ah yes. We're choosing the fewest number of battles because the Opryland worked out that guest satisfaction has many, many factors that influence it, but actually the way in which they resolve problems what the arrival experience is like and the quality of food and beverage has a profound impact on the overall guest satisfaction. It, it is material, truly material. Then they break it down further. So then they go to the various teams in this instance, housekeeping, bell service, front desk and say, well, we want to give a great arrival experience. Let, let, let's not speak too grand about the whole guest satisfaction score let's just home in on the arrival experience and hey housekeeping bell service front desk what do you think what, what what kind of what kind of goals should we achieve here well housekeeping saying well the room should be available bell service saying well luggage at the moment gets delivered to a room average turnaround time to get the luggage there is appalling it's 106 minutes average need to get it to 20. By the way, that's not a spelling mistake. It really was. This place is like a small town. And also the check-in just takes too long. At the moment is an average of 12 minutes. Let's get it down to six. So, so therein lies that, that first discipline. Remember, we're talking about moving the curve. It starts here. So when I say define, we really do define. Then we go here. Maybe this is your next ah uh, yes, who knows? 
because what we don't want to do is obsess over these lag measures, these outcomes. Let's obsess over lead measures. Let's act on the behaviors, things that we can really do something about. And Bell service team come back and say, hey, you know what? We, can, we could match the luggage tags with the room keys. That would really help. We could also escort um, guests with their bags to the rooms. Then we get into discipline three. Discipline three is the, um, uh, the discipline of engagement, how we keep a truly compelling scoreboard. So here's, a, here's the scoreboard now for the Bell service team. So they want to get the luggage delivery down to 20 minutes. At this point in time, they should be at 40 minutes. They're actually at 35. So they're ahead of the game. That's why they're bright green. And you can see their lead measures here in matching luggage tags and accompanying guests. So in one view, they, they've got this one compelling scoreboard. So they know where they are in relation to where they should be. Discipline four is the discipline of accountability, where we bring everything together. And the, in this instance, the Bell service team get together and they make mutual commitments. They're going to do some extra training. They're going to revise their staffing because they know there's some significant activity going on on Friday. And there you have in one visual the four disciplines of execution. And I can share with you that the results that the Opryland subsequently acquired by Marriott um, experienced were off the scale. We, we, we have um, literally hundreds of instances of breakthrough results being achieved because of this preparedness to define the goal, break it down to the fewest number of battles, empower the teams to build lead measures and scoreboards and hold each other accountable each week. Sounds great, doesn't it? You definitely should take a closer look. So this whole move thing, I went, I went through it quite quick, and that that was, you know, that was a nice hotel example. On, but what would your lag measure mean? May, maybe it would be some of the measures that you've you've already shared with me around OTIF, around growth, around employee experience. But then it gets you thinking, doesn't it? What would your lead measures be? So we should just step into the anatomy of a lead measure just for a moment. There's this distinction between a lag measure, which is the outcome, that's the KPIs you shared with me on the chat, and the lead measures, the behaviors that lead to them. Let's take this as an example. We're gonna lose weight, we're gonna get fit. What's the lag measure? Please go on the chat, don't overthink it. What's the lag measure for losing weight? And you really don't need to overthink it. There you go, Laurent, straight in. Yeah, kg's weight, straight in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to apply some specificity to this. So we're actually going to have, we're going to say, I'm going to reduce my weight from a start line to a finish line to a deadline. Um, lead measures, what are the two things that you can do that are both predictive of the outcome that you seek and influenceable by you? Again, on the chat, just, just straight in. Thank you. John's all over it. Jill's in there. Laurent is in. Fiona, thank you very much. So again, let's get specific. This is going to be my calorific intake. This is the level of exercise I'm going to engage in. The lead measure is defined by the people closest to the work. So when we get a real example, particular uh, organization we worked with a couple of years ago, they're looking to grow. They're indicating, okay, we've got a particular revenue stream. We're going to take it from X to Y. The people closest to the work, that's the people in business development and sales said, you know what? If we increase our level of face-to-face -face hours in front of our target executives, that will make a material contribution to growing our revenue. If you like, that's their equivalent of diet and exercise. By the way, I didn't put the other big lead measure in here, which was raising their skill levels. That So raising skill and upping their face-to-face -face hours was effectively their equivalent of diet and exercise. So when we say breakthrough results, yes, really, we really are talking about achieving these results. This is the yes, really bit. This is the working with teams on lead measures rather than obsessing over lag measures. Same in construction particular organization we work with had some significant issues with major incidents. They needed to get those serious incidents down. They decided, when I say they, I mean 
the foreman down, that the, the people closest to the work said, actually, if we complied to these specific eight safety standards, it would make a huge difference. So that's, dis so, so that's discipline two, which is stepping into a bit more detail. But what about that discipline three? I flashed that up quite quickly, didn't I? The green and the yellow and you know the scores for the Bell service team. Well, here's the reality. People play differently when they are keeping score. Maybe this is another ah oh, yes for you. This is where you keep score. The people closest to the work keep score. So it's all well and good having the green and the yellow and it looks nice, but what will you use? We use spreadsheets, we use something on your um, on your screen. Be careful. Like this is one of my spreadsheets from back in the day. And, um, you know, I tried to jazz it up and thought, yeah, I'll put some nice dials on it. Well, I found with the people around me would rather stick a pencil in their eye than go through my spreadsheets. When they keep score, when the people closest to the work keep score, well, that's really achieving breakthrough results at that point. And what about those meetings? I mentioned the Bell service team getting together and holding each other accountable. Well, this is where it comes from. It's called this cadence or this rhythm of accountability. Those of you maybe on this call, there may be some cyclists out there, you'll understand the importance and the relevance of cadence or rhythm. It's the same here. Every week, we hold what we refer to as a WIG meeting. This WIG meeting only lasts 15 minutes. And it has three simple components. Did you do what you said you were going to do last week? What is the impact on the scoreboard? What's my commitment for the coming week? So yeah, I flashed through that and I talked about bell service and isn't it lovely in the hotel? But you know, this is the this is the real business end now of achieving breakthrough results because people are prepared to ask this compelling singular question every single week. What's the one or two things I can do this week to impact the scoreboard? So let's consider discipline four and how it all glues together. Could this be your organization now? Could you come away from this session today and think, yeah, I could see that. So I define my goal. I break it down to the fewest number of battles. I go to the people to those closest to the work, they build their lead measures. And then week in, week out, modest, manageable commitments are made. Imagine, for example, that you're in an organization, there's say 200 people in total, and each of these blocks represent a 60 or 45 or 60 minute commitment, just that week. We're not talking about seven hours in a week, I'm just, just talking about an hour, maybe less. It doesn't take a genius to work out, you'll get to 10,000 hours of dedicated effort, which has a line of sight, ultimately to the overall wildly important goal within 12 months. It's a profound thought. So when, so when we say move, and we, we refer to this thing called the four disciplines of execution, please you know, do bear in mind, it, this is not some kind of academic journey uh, that we're going on here. This is real practical execution. So what's the third and final part then? The third and final part is where we measure. Now this, is, this will test our metal a little bit on this call because we're now gonna get really specific. So we've defined our goal. We're moving our performance curve by, by changing, changing human behavior. You know, we, we really are taking this very, very seriously. And let me give you a measure now that perhaps for many of you, you haven't, I'm sure you've all heard of perhaps EBIT or EBITDA or, or cash or adherence to budget. I want to give you the equivalent now for execution and we refer to it as the execution performance score. The execution performance score breaks down whether or not we're holding our sessions every week, whether we're making and keeping commitments whether we're driving our lead measures and whether we're driving ultimately to our goal. The Bell service team that I mentioned earlier, they are doing an amazing job. They were holding 100% of their sessions, making and keeping commitments, driving leads, driving wigs. So on an XPX score, which has a maximum of one for each column, 
they get a maximum 4.0. We know where they are on the, this performance curve. It's not a guess. We know exactly where they are. Front desk, not so strong. They've got a different execution performance score, but we know where they are. Think about it now. Imagine you're running this. You, you really are achieving breakthrough results because you've got complete visibility of this score, this execution performance score. That particular one there is an aggregated view, by the way. And you can coach to it. You can say, hey, looks like front desk are not holding their sessions. Um, I, can, I can tell you, by the way, that they were having trouble with shift patterns. So as a manager, we step in, clear the path. Perhaps housekeeping, they're having some difficulties here because their lead measure is just not, it's just not taking traction. It's still not working the way in which we expect. Well, as a leader, we step in, clear the path, review that lead measure. But this is a beautiful thing. This is when we're running um, a, a program with the four disciplines of execution, when we're really achieving breakthrough results, we know at any given time where any team is on this performance curve, because we know what the execution performance score is. It could be a different team, it could be biz dev or marketing and sales. It could be maybe a logistics business where you've got different, different parts of the country, but you can have it in the palm of your hand as well. So with, with the app that, 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 that our clients use, you know, it's visible to you. So could you see this? You know, is this something, I mean, do, do you balk at this and you think, oh God, this all, this all, seems, very, all seems very technical. Like maybe you've got nightmares now of Six Sigma and, but, but hang on, just, just, just take a moment. It, it, it is, is infinitely more straightforward than you might first think. This session today is about the achievement of breakthrough results the way we define our target, by considering that performance curve, what, what are you gonna home in on? Apply our disciplines, apply those four disciplines and be prepared to measure that progress. That's what so many of our clients were prepared to do. And uh, something I'd, I'd very much like you to, um, uh, to enjoy at some point in the future. I have a warning, I'm afraid. So we uh, maybe maybe let's start here. Could somebody just go on the chat now and describe the purpose of this game? What's the um, what's the objective of this game? What is it the What is it that you have to do? In the, in the fewest number of words, if you can just um, for those of you not not familiar, that is the game of golf. I know I'm being a bit facetious there. There you go, Rosemary, you are right. And Deirdre is on it. Uh, Michelle, well done, well done. Yeah, thank you, Sheila, thank you, Claire. You put the, put the ball in the hole. Um, so it's um, straightforward then, we, we all agreed. So if, if any, any of you have played this game before, you could perhaps indicate to me on the chat whether you think, because it is a very simple principle, you get the ball in the hole. Easy or hard, just on the chat now. You can, um, you can save an, all, an awful lot of anxiety by not playing golf. Um, <laughs> Philip, very good. I can imagine you've put your practice in. Um, there's something about the four disciplines of execution. And there's a little phrase, says easy, does hard. So we've gone through in our 40 minutes today and it's been great to just share with you and give you a taste of the four disciplines and how it all fits together. Um, and and th there are definitely options because it really does, says easy, does hard. So if you wanted to go solo, um, please you know, get yourself on Amazon and I'm sure you can pick up a you know, used copy for 10 euro or 20 euro or whatever. And um, you, you, know, you could do that. And, and absolutely as, a, as an individual, that's something that that you could follow. In fact, I was reading a, a book a couple of years ago by a guy called Cal Newport called Deep Work. So if any of you are like sort of deep techie uh, out there and want to just really step into what it's like to do deep work, um, it's a great book. But I'm in the middle of this book and then he just suddenly refers to the four disciplines of execution as something that he uses individually. So it was great. It was really, really good to, to hear that. 
Um, so you could do that, or you could adopt 4DX just as a team. So we have a team approach to the adoption of 4DX. Uh, we run a public program. Um, actually, we've got one that starts in May. And um, if that's something that you, you have interest in, then you know, please, please let us know afterwards. So we can keep it, keep it contained. The breakthrough results that I referred to throughout the last 35 minutes or so has been that, that very strategic implementation of 4DX. And, and clearly, we, we would be delighted to, you know, to talk to you about that as well. But the most important thing is take a breath, we'll have a cup of coffee, have a discussion, speak to Cloda, um, uh, speak to me, you know, message back and forth. It would be good just to keep this conversation going. Um, thank you so much for your attention um, uh, throughout. You, you, you've been great on, on the chat in particular. And Clodagh, I think it would be great to, I don't know whether there's any questions or thoughts um, or you've got any observations, you know, happy to uh, step in. Perfect. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for today's presentation and for sharing your insight and experience and the application and for generating that conversation with us. Uh, really insightful. Um, I'd like to invite uh, the attendees now not to unmute, but could you post your question um, in the chat function? Or if you'd prefer me to ask your question, um, I'm happy to do that on your behalf. So send that to me on the chat function. Um, do, in order to implement this, Ray, just to get the conversation started, yeah. does this require a buy-in from top management? Uh, well, that's a good question. Thank you. And um, you, you may recall the options that I just put up there, you know, the solo and team function and the strategic. So let's just talk about strategic. That's the breakthrough after 